Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's fun fold card has a cut and then a flip. It's called a folded corner card. And here's a quick look at the card we're going to be creating. I have several other samples to share with you as well. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below and next to it, you'll find a small bell icon. If you click that, you'll receive notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. I have my Stampin' Trimmer here, and the one reason I absolutely love it is not only because of the clear cutting track, but there's both a scoring and a cutting blade that are included. We have also an extended arm here that goes just past 17 inches, which covers all those scrapbookers needs as well. The paper is cut five and a half by eight and a half, and I'm using old olive cardstock. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna score it in half at four and a quarter inches. One of the things I love about the trimmer is this guide that's here at the top. There's also one at the bottom, which is gonna enable you to keep your cardstock nice and straight. The guidelines are printed right here on the trimmer and they will not rub off. It's got a fantastic coating that protects that. Now that that's scored in half, let's go ahead and move this over to the three inch mark. I'm gonna navigate the cutting blade up into the position where I'm going to need it. And the first cut is going to be at two and a half inches. Now I'm gonna turn this slightly so that you can see it. It's much easier when you're in person, but the dimensions are actually printed on this side of the trimmer. I'm gonna line up the blade at the two and a half inch mark. There's also a little indication mark right here in the trimmer where that point is. I've closed the cutting track, and now I'm going to cut down to the four and seven eighths inch mark. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the cutting track. You're gonna see we've got our first slit. We are gonna turn the cardstock to the right, and we're gonna keep it here on the three inch mark. We are gonna take this blade now, and we are going to align it so that it's going to fall here. This is the great thing of that clear cutting track because you're gonna be able to see where you're going. That's actually at the three inch mark. So I'm gonna close my cutting track, make sure my blade is aligned. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut from there up to the five eighths inch mark here at the top. That's going to ensure that we have equal space on both sides of these areas once the slit has been made. And you're gonna see that that's left us this. This is what's going to flip for this fun fold. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this slit and we're going to pivot the opening towards the top so it's coming towards you and then what you're going to do is you're going to press that in place take your fingers and press here to create your crease marks and i like to go over them with my bone folder so they're nice and flat and then what you can do is go ahead and fold your cardstock in half on the original score line and again just like i do with all my fun folds i am really careful to make sure i go over those score lines so that it holds well now let's talk about decorating it I'm gonna be using my old olive ink and the Christmas tree from the stamp set called Most Wonderful Time. This stamp set is part of a large product medley here in the current mini catalog. You'll find it here on page seven. This medley of product includes beautiful designer series papers, some of which have beautiful gold embossed foils, sticker sheets, tinsel trim, dies, stamp sets, and embellishments. I'm gonna open up my card base so that it's nice and flat. And I am gonna keep this positioned here so that I have an idea of placement for my trees. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink up that tree and I'm gonna stamp it here near the bottom. Without re-inking it, I am going to navigate that tree down just a little bit and I'm gonna stamp again. And you're gonna see how that creates a graduation of color. This is a wonderful tip when you're card making because what it's going to do is it's gonna allow you to eliminate purchasing separate ink pads in different shades. One ink pad can actually produce at least two, sometimes three shades of color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna vary this across the card. You're also going to see too, how I'm gonna fill in on different areas to create some density here. I'm gonna ink up and I'm gonna stamp off here in my scratch paper and I'm gonna make some of those trees even higher. So it looks more like a forest. And then I'll repeat this process just to fill it in to my liking. Now that that's finished, let's go ahead and set that off to the side and let's work on the greeting. My piece of Whisper White cardstock measures two and three quarters inch square. I have my embossing tray and my gold embossing powder here nearby ready to go. I'd like to work over a coffee filter. I'm gonna sprinkle it generously over that inked image and then I'm able to pinch this and pour the excess back in the container, which eliminates a lot of waste. I'll be using my Versamark ink for this. 
I've pulled out this large greeting from the stamp set that's called Christmas Means More. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up in the Versamark ink, and then we're going to stamp that here. Lots of firm, even pressure because you want to make sure that you trace out that entire image. We'll go ahead and lift, and then I'm going to bring in my gold embossing powder, and I'm going to sprinkle very generously. Remember, working over the coffee filter is going to ensure that any excess won't be wasted. Now that we have the image powdered, let's go ahead and use the heat tool. I know this is going to be rather loud, so I'm going to walk you through the process. You're going to hold the heat tool close to the cardstock, and I do recommend on working in one area at a time. As the paper and the powder becomes warm, it actually will conduct heat and spread very, very quickly. This powder finish is going to turn to a beautiful gold foil finish when we're done. I've got the heat tool on, and again, I'm starting in one area working close to the cardstock, and I like to keep the gun moving because you can scorch the cardstock. You want to make sure that you don't overheat the area. Do you see how it's turning to that beautiful gold metallic finish? Now I'm going to make sure that I move my fingers to protect them, and then I'll work on the rest of this greeting. I'll give that just a couple seconds to cool, but I want to explain a couple things to you about heat embossing. You want to make sure that you haven't missed an area because if the powder hasn't been set, it will simply rub right off. As I mentioned, you can overheat an area, so just make sure that you heat emboss until the image turns to that foily finish. I'm going to go ahead and use my silicone craft sheet to add adhesive to the back side. I love the silicone craft sheet because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. This greeting now is going to go here on that square panel that we have flipped, and we'll go ahead and just create a border around that frame and tack that in place. Now this is going to need to be attached. And I'm going to invert this so that you can see that we're going to put adhesive only in the corner. You're not going to want to put adhesive here because remember, this is going to flip and this will become the inside of the card. And that adhesive then will stick to the inside. So let's go ahead and add some adhesive here and here. The Stampin' Seal Plus is very strong, so I am ensured that this will not lift. Let's work on the inside of the card. From that same medley of products, I chose some designer series paper. Like most of the Stampin' Up! designer papers, they are double-sided. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful with that gold foil accent? I'm going to use that as my wrong side today. I'm going to go ahead and add adhesive to the back side. This now is going to go to the center of the card base. Now, I've got another panel here that's going to hold my greeting, but let me show you how I lined it up for the outside of the card. This whisper white piece of cardstock is cut three and a quarter by four and a half. And I'm opting to use the same old olive ink. This time I took the words Merry Christmas from another stamp set. And that set is called Celebration Tidings. I love to mix and match my stamps, which is something I'm sure you enjoy doing too. After all, we did make the investment in our product, so it's great to use one product with another. I'm going to go ahead and ink that up in the old olive ink, and we'll stamp that here. Let's go ahead and add adhesive to the back side. Now to adhere this to the inside of the card, I want to give you a good tip. You're going to go all the way to the left-hand side. Do not stick it down yet. You want to make sure that when this front panel is closed, that that greeting cardstock layer does not show from the front, which will give us a beautiful presentation for that designer series paper. Then when you're assured of that, go ahead and just tack that in place. I'm using some of the gold cording from the Wonder of Season Combo Trim Pack. I'm going to open up the card and I'm going to bring this cording through the inside. When you go to make a bow, you create that single tie to secure the ribbon. But often what happens is you're not able to keep the tension and the bow becomes loose. So let me give you a tip. This is where your glue dots are going to come in. I'm going to peel back one here to reveal it. I'm using my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment. And I'm balling this up. As a matter of fact, you can make it even smaller with your fingers. They're very, very sticky, so I'm not worried about it not being sticky enough. I am going to lay this where I want that knot and bow to be positioned when I'm done. That little bit of tackiness now is going to hold that one single tie in place while we make our bow. So I'm just going to position that cording here. I'm going to shimmy that down to that glue dot, and I'm going to press. And look it. That holds your tension. Then we'll go ahead and we'll make our bow. When you pull your bow, pull the center very, very tightly. Oftentimes, too, the loops are uneven or they're too big. So let me give you another tip. Place your finger here on the knot or pinch it, and then pull one of the loose ends to adjust those loop sizes to your liking. Once you have it where you want it, secure it one more time, and then you can come in with your scissors and give it a small trim. 
Isn't this beautiful? But as I promised you, I have several other cards to share with you using this exact same fun fold. This one has a fall theme using the Love of Leaves bundle, which is the stamp set and the coordinating dies. The stamps actually create a very subtle background here using the Versamark ink, which is the same ink you might recall that I used here for the heat embossing powder. That tone on tone on cardstock without any embossing powder is, is a wonderful product. I added some simple embellishments here, and then on the inside of the card, I offset the panel again so that it wasn't visible from the front. My last card can be used for just about anything. This uses the Birds and Branches bundle, again, the stamp set and the coordinating dies. I added a little bit of color here to my bird with the Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers, and on the inside, you'll see again that I've offset that greeting. Whether you're creating this card for a get well, a thinking of you, a birthday, or even the holidays, I think that you'll agree that this fun fold creates a lot of different opportunities and a really interesting opening for your card. Which one of these cards is your favorite? I would love to know. Leave me a comment below. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, you can request them over at lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.